For genotype 2, which is somewhere around 15-20% in the U.S., the only approved regimen is cefospivir and ribavirin. This is generally used for 12 weeks, though some people extend the duration to 16 weeks in patients with cirrhosis, particularly those that have failed prior therapy. This offers a SVR or cure rate of about 90 plus percent and is the only FDA approved option that is all oral at the current time. Other of the approved agents have in vitro activity in genotype 2 but have not been extensively evaluated and are not approved by the FDA at the current time. At the current time we don't have any FDA approved options for people who fail are current first line all oral agents. Um, some people have tried retreating patients with either one of the other regimens or the same regimen for longer. However, right now that is not FDA approved and we really don't know the optimal duration. I think a lot of these patients will end up in the next generation of treatments. So we have from all of these companies, newer drug regimens that are coming out with more potent drugs in the same class that are both more pangenotypic, but also which seem to have activity against some of the variants that are resistant to the first generation of drugs. Though I think at the current time, our options are limited, particularly for patients with milder liver disease they certainly should wait for newer data and better regimens. For those with more advanced liver disease, we have to decide on a case-by-case -case basis whether to try something outside the box today, enroll them in a clinical trial, which would be the best option so we can learn, or wait for what's coming out tomorrow. For patients with cirrhosis who fail prior therapy, this is the group of patients in whom we need research the most. Whether it's going to be adding additional agents, extending the duration of therapy, or a combination of those two factors, I think remains to be determined. But when you look at the retreatment trials that are currently being done, they tend to overrepresent the cirrhotic patients because they're the patients most likely to fail the first treatment course. Type 3 uh, comprises a, somewhere in that 15% range as well with genotype 2 in the United States. The two of them combined are about 30%, 25 to 30% of hep C, depending on where you are, but is probably increasing as the number of genotype 2 patients are being cured. They're becoming an increasing number of either untreated or non-responder patients. And they're the group of patients for whom our treatment options at the current time are most limited. Cefospivir and ribavirin for 24 weeks is the approved regimen, but we are seeing the pangenotypic NS5As being tested in genotype 2 and 3, often with a nucleotide like cefospivir, and it's hopeful that Late summer or early fall, we'll have new treatment options for genotype 3. For patients with genotype 3 and cirrhosis, the response rates to cefospivir and ribavirin are even lower than for patients who don't have cirrhosis. So for most of my patients with genotype 3 and cirrhosis in my practice, they have been waiting for newer drug regimens because I'm concerned about treating them with an inadequate regimen today that may impair their response. We've seen data that interferon may improve the response rate in that group of patients, but most patients and physicians are reluctant to go back to interferon when it does seem that, though not yet FDA approved, we have options that can answer these patients' desperate need. For genotype 3 patients who fail cefospivir and ribavirin, we don't know how the newer regimens will work. 
And I think that's something we're going to have to see over time. But as I said, it is hopeful as we get to pangenotypic protease inhibitors to add to the NS5As and the, and the polymerase inhibitors that we may see three drug regimens for genotype 3 and newer options that offer a chance for success even in those patients who fail currently available therapy.